QuickBooks Online 2A Journal Entries Funding the Business and Payroll. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, email, and website, the book Cost Accounting for Dummies we teach online every week, and the Twitter account. Our next step here is to do a journal entry. And we're going to find out in a minute that this is in the Banking tab under Journal Entry. And we're going to fund the business. And by that I mean we're going to put cash and other assets into the business as an owner. We're going to put in cash, equipment, and office furniture. They're all assets. We debit to increase assets. We credit equity, which means the ownership in the business. And in this case, it'll be the owner's equity. That's one journal entry to fund the business. Number one, Number two, we're going to pay an employee based on that timesheet that we saw in the last video. On the timesheet in the last video, they worked five hours at a rate, and I'm adding a rate that was not, we didn't see this before on the timesheet, $30 an hour. So if I multiply the two together, hours in blue times rate in green, I get a payroll expense of $150. I debit to increase in expense. A credit checking to reduce cash so I can pay an employee. If you're new to accounting, we usually put the meaning for the journal entry below it. In this case, it's to record five hours of labor expense at $30 an hour. So I'm going to go over to the main screen, banking. And if you go to the more column, journal entry. You're going to see a couple things when it comes up. It's going to uh, prompt me for the accounts. Let me move it up on the screen here. So this is going to be journal entry number one. So I'm going to debit an account called checking bank, $1,000. I'm going to debit an account called machinery and equipment. I'm going to put them together. $7,000. You'll see that the entry had originally automatically posted a $1,000 credit to make the entry balance. But since I'm not done yet, I keep going. So I'm going to hit enter. And now I need to credit equity. So I'm looking at my list of entries here. And I'm looking for the equity account. So there, I have a couple of choices. There's opening balance of equity, and there's retained earnings. To keep it easy, I'm going to have one equity account called retained earnings. And you see that it automatically filled in for 8000 So entry number one, I deposit cash, checking goes up, debit. I contribute machinery and equipment, 7000 I credit retained earnings, 8000 which is part of the equity section. In fact, just to illustrate, what I could do is go to the interview, choose from all fund types, next. I'm going to create an equity account, next. And I'm going to call it owner's equity just to segregate owner's equity. Um, I'm not going to put a number on it yet. The name self-explanatory. I won't put in a description. I'm going to hit finish. And so owner's equity comes up as an account. And I'm going to credit that seven, the $8,000. So what I'm going to do is save this journal entry. Since the transaction date is prior to your closing date, are you sure you want to make the change? I'm going to hit yes. It's not the end of the month yet. And the screen refreshes. It says journal entry number one added, and I'm ready for entry number two. And if uh, one thing I forgot to do is if I go back to journal entry number one, there's a memo section at the bottom, and I should have put in a memo. And I'm going to say to fund 
the business at inception with cash and equipment. So now I'll save it again. And when the screen comes up, what you'll see is, is that I have another journal entry number two that I can make. So journal entry number two is an automatic post. So we're going to open up the account dropdown. And I'm going to look for a payroll expense account. So I'm scrolling down until I see expenses down here. There's a cost of labor account I might use. I'm curious to see. There's not a payroll one set up. So I'm going to go back up to cost of goods sold. And I'm going to choose cost of labor. That's pretty accurate. And I'm going to say, we're going to say we paid our employee $150. When I go to the next line, we're going to credit checking bank, $150. The explanation is to pay for labor costs related to fancy clothing order. That's why I'm making the entry. It's entry number two. So I've got debit cost of labor, which is really payroll, credit checking, and I'm going to hit save. Are you sure you want to make the change? Yes. And you'll see that entry number three comes up. So what we just did was we made two journal entries, one to fund the business and one to pay an employee. If I click or put my cursor over the recent button, you can see that entries number one and two light up so you can work with them. When you go over to reports, if I were to do reports balance sheet, I'm going to skip this. And remember that a balance sheet takes place on a specific day, a point in time. And you'll see there's the, uh, the checking, which is the $1,000 deposit less the $150 payroll. There's the machinery and equipment. We also see that we started with $8,000 equity. We subtract the $150 payroll expense, and we see the debits equal credits. So you can see the impact in the balance sheet for the two journal entries that we made. That's the end of number four. Thanks for what? Number uh, 2A, excuse me. Thanks for watching.